good afternoon everybody welcome to ed christian christian fellowship thank you for joining us this afternoon and i want to introduce ourselves today um gabriel come on i'm gary i'm daniela i'm christopher i'm mrs kajo thank you for joining us this afternoon and uh, we're going to be singing um some praise songs and worship and we'd like you to join us and um, let me open up a, a prayer heavenly father we thank you jesus for this time lord we thank you father for our lives we thank you lord for all that you've done for us we give you all the glory we give you all the honor father because you are good you're awesome lord our rock of ages victory belongs to you my father You've been so good, oh my Father. Heavenly Father, this hour, we pray, Father God, that you come and intercede for us, oh my Father. Holy Spirit, come and, and, and take over. Take over and worship, oh my, my Father. Heavenly Father, we pray for that one who is down, oh Lord. Encourage that one who is down. Encourage that one who has lost hope, oh my Father. Give hope. Give life, O oh Father, to the fainted, O oh my Father. Because, O oh Father, the Bible says, Lord, that you're, you give us faith when, when, we lost, when, when we've lost it, O oh my Father. Let your will be done, Heavenly Father. Holy Spirit, reign in this place as we bless your name, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to lead you into a worship and praise. We start off with some a cappella as we usually do, and then we'll get into this. Amen. Amen. I will bless the Lord of my soul and all that is within me. Bless him.
access to your voice. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. You are good, good, oh, You are good, good, oh. You are good and Your mercy is forever.
Unstoppable. We worship you, Jesus. We worship your holy name, my Father. There is none like you. You are unstoppable, unchangeable, Lord God you, Almighty. Jesus. And that's who you are. And that's why you worship your holy name and glorify you and sanctify my Father. We thank you, my Father God, because you know for sure nothing can stop you. Not even COVID-19. Nothing can change you. Nothing can stop you. You are God alone. And that's why you worship and we glorify you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, my God. We Amen. thank you once again, welcome you. We, we thank you for joining us uh, this afternoon, for being with us, um, wherever you are. Um, um, could be morning, could be afternoon, could be evening. Depends on where you are and what day you're watching this, um, uh, this uh, worship, Sunday worship. Um, we thank God for his message, for his kept us throughout this time. Um, this is what we call the new norm now, where um, the buildings are locked, the churches are locked, everything is uh, uh, where we are, we are, we are now. Um, the buildings, our uh, businesses have been locked down, but the way to God, I keep saying the way to God has not been locked. And I say always that probably God, this, God set this one up to be um, a reset button for us, a reset to our lives that we are going back to to, to him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ Amen. and we thank God because he has kept you and I um, we pray for those um, who are going through situations um, that have never been seen before because such times have not been seen in our lifetimes um, we have seen governments being closed down we have seen hospitals being overwhelmed just because of an enemy that's that cannot be seen and I said an unseen enemy a COVID-19 attacking government systems, attacking um, health systems, attacking even schools, attacking um, corporate corporations um, where you walk for weeks and weeks and there's no restaurant open, weeks and weeks and there's no shops open. Um, this really is, um, is something that um, was never imagined. No one imagined 2020 to be like this. But our God knew such situations and even now that we come in our homes and we worship him because when you go back to the beginning of the church church was like this when we come together and we worship in our families and we come strong in our families but today god is so smart that he foresaw such times and then he introduced to us um uh, what we call social media that we can worship through uh, this media that can come to your homes and you worship together to keep the fire burning in us in the name of our lord jesus christ and, and, I am, and, and we pray for those who are sick, we pray for those who are going through grieving. You know, at such times, um, we only focus on COVID-19, but there are other diseases um, rampaging through our societies, our communities, our, our churches, our, our bodies. Uh, we've got the cancer, we've got the malaria, like in Africa, we've got so many other sicknesses. And let's not forget, there's other diseases out there. And we pray for the people who are sick, that God may come and heal them and strengthen them. Those have got people in their hospital, in the hospitals. At such times, we, we continue to lift them up in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And, um, and we are going to share our word. We've been looking at our series, The Holy Spirit, for the last few weeks. And, and I believe at such times, it's always good to revisit why we should have the Holy Spirit in our midst. Because I go back to when Jesus, before Jesus left, he promised that he's going to send the Holy Spirit. We are the church as it is now of the Holy Spirit. Um, he has been in precedent to us. We've been seeing why we need the Holy Spirit. We've been seeing uh, what he does when he comes. We have seen um, um, where we should be as a church. And there's a scripture uh, that... Um, we, we, we keep revisiting when Jesus was leaving in John chapter 14 he says I'm not going to leave you on your own I'm going to ask my father to send the Holy Spirit and to me Jesus entrusted the Holy Spirit to us and we saw the importance of bearing fruit as Christians we said we are supposed to bear fruit fruit of the Holy Spirit I hope um, those who've been following us remember that it's important for us as a church as Christians to bear fruit, fruit of the Spirit. And we saw some time back the scripture where Jesus says that I am the vine, you are the branches. And no vine, no branch which is in me 
and does not bear fruit. And if you don't bear fruit, he says, I'm going to come and cut you off because he says, you're useless to me if you don't bear fruit. It's important to us as Christians that we bear fruit of the Holy Spirit. Um, I keep saying that Jesus Christ entrusted the entire church, not to man, but to the Holy Spirit. The entire church, he says, I'm not leaving you alone. I'm sending, I'm going to ask my father to send my spirit to, to, to be with you. We need him more than anything else. And it's important as a church at this particular moment in time to go back to the Holy Spirit, the one who was entrusted into us. As you know, I thank God for the parents. I thank God for the fathers and mothers and all that. But ultimately, as Christians, God entrusted us to the Holy Spirit. He says in the book of Corinthians, I think chapter 2, first book of Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, I think he says that who knows the Father, who knows the mind of the Father except his Spirit, his Holy Spirit. And therefore, if we need access to the Father to know what he thinks of us in such a time in this COVID-19, we need to run to the Holy Spirit so that he may reveal to us the heart, the mind of God, so that we may know the direction of where to go. And today I want to see what the Holy Spirit does, some of the things he does. I know the list um, cannot be exhausted, but we can go through that. There is... Um, a scripture I want us to read, which is in the book of John, chapter 16 and verse 7. Um, John, um, John, John 16 and verse 7. Um, it says, um, I'm going to read an ESV version. Um, ESV version, John chapter 16, verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For I, if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if, if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin. Yeah. He says that um, I am going away. Yeah. I'm going away that the helper will come. You see, Jesus in all his wisdom saw that he has come. And he was with the disciples for more than three and a half years. For almost three and a half years. And was with them. So he said, you know what? It's time for me to go. It's imperative that I go. Because if I don't go, the helper will not come. And the Holy Spirit comes to help us. You know, at that particular moment when Jesus was speaking to the disciples before he left, he saw them and they were like kind of really sad and say, you know what? What are we going to be doing? You've been with us for three and a half years. You've been showing us everything that we know. You've been feeding us. You've been guiding us. Now you are going. What's going to happen to us? And he said, do not mind about that. I'm not going to leave you on your own. I'm going to send you a helper. Actually, he says, um, he says it better in chapter 14, verse 8. He says, um, he says um, let's read that one. That I'm not leaving you as orphans. Chapter 14. Um, Daniela, are you going to read for us? Yeah. What um, Chapter John, um, uh, I think it's 15. John. John, yeah. What verse? Verse 8. Let's try verse 8 and see. It says, When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. Okay, uh, thanks for that. But the one I wanted says that I'm not going to leave you as orphans. Mm. Yeah, um, I think um, I could have got it wrong. Um, it could be John 8. Um, it says I'm not going to leave you as orphans. Mm. Um, yeah, it says, um, I think it's, yeah, I'll look for the speech. Yeah. John 14, 14, 18. 14, 18, sorry, 14, 18. John, can you read for us? John 14, 18. Uh, sorry, church. John 14, 18. I will not it says, no, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you so much. I will not leave you as orphans. Mm -hmm. He promises that I'm not going to leave you as orphans. Mm -hmm. You know, there is nothing as bad as remaining as an orphan. Mm -hmm. And even Jesus foresaw that and said, right, I'm going, but do not mind. I will not leave you as orphans. Because it's a terrible thing to be an orphan. Some of you have been orphaned at, an, at, an, at a young age, you know. Um, it's really bad because when you are orphaned, 
um, you, you, you lose um, a sense of identity yeah you lose a sense of belonging um, you lose um, you can be you are open to be abused and, and disused often who wander the streets that your mom died your son you remember I remember in the times of um, the, AIDS, the AIDS pandemic you know we have have now we have the virus uh, this uh, COVID-19 but there was a time when AIDS or HIV had just come to the world I remember it attacked a part in the Masaka area in Uganda where um, people died um, fathers died and mothers died and you could walk the streets of the villages where you could walk and count houses where her fathers fathers and mothers have died and children as young as seven six years we are on their own in their houses without father or mother that's how bad it was you could walk villages and count houses one two three twenty houses without father or mother because the aids pandemic had attacked the entire village and killed in multitudes of people and children were orphans you know, children will do whatever they want to do. People come and use them as young as seven years. Girls will be raped and molested by people like that. But Father, the, our Jesus says that I'm not going to leave you as orphans because he knows it's dangerous. That's why you see, Jesus calls himself, God calls himself the father to the fatherless. Mm -hmm. he, he, he hates to abandon us. And he said, you know what, I'm going, but don't worry. I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit who will come and be with you because our God is a father to the fatherless. Yeah, yeah. Um, Psalm 68, verse 5. If you can read for us that one, 68, verse 8 says, I'm the father to the fatherless. And um, the Holy Spirit comes and fills that void that you don't feel a sense of abandonment, that you've been left on your own. And many times as a church, we feel like we haven't got anybody, we've been left, we've been abandoned. A child who grows up having that uh, feeling in them that you feel abandoned yes um 58 yeah 68 verse 5. he said um power to the fatherless defender of widows this is god whose dwelling is holy yes you see when he says i'm not going to leave you as orphans i'm sending you my holy spirit so the holy spirit comes and becomes the defender of the church he guards the church yeah when we entrust him to our when we entrust ourselves to him he becomes our defender he is the defender he gives us a sense of identity yeah he protects us from affliction of the enemy yeah an orphan church is always abused and used by everyone it's my prayer that in this COVID-19 as we press the reset button the church becomes a sanctuary not to be used by everyone and abused but we come to a church which had, which is being filled by the Holy Spirit and we have a sense of belonging as a church that we belong to our God when you don't when you live as orphans you wander from place to place looking for an identity and the church has been running to and from many times even as individuals looking for somebody to love us looking for somebody to encourage us but the Holy Spirit is here for us as the one who is entrusted as the father to the fatherless who's come to nurture us to protect us from affliction from all these false doctrines and demonic attacks that's why we need him in this time that we don't be exposed to false doctrines and lies of the devil because he becomes our defender he becomes the one who cover us he becomes the one who protects us because he says i'm not leaving you as orphans we are coming out of this COVID-19 not as orphans but as a church filled by the Holy Spirit and not lacking direction but because we've got an identity which is in Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior mm -hmm. and then he says he is the helper he says I'm going to send you the helper you know we need help um, as a church he's going to come and help us many times we do things on our own without no help whatsoever you are going to fail you are bound to fail yeah without the holy spirit there is nothing you can achieve in life however much you try your degrees will not take you as far as the word of god is going to take you but when jesus comes when the holy spirit comes he helps you he helps you in everything that you need to do for god yeah he helps you to witness you know um, even witnessing about Jesus Christ on the street is really difficult. But once the Holy Spirit comes, it gives you that boldness that you're able to witness for him. You witness about him. You witness about the goodness that he has done for you. 
without him you become shy but when he comes, he helps you to witness about his, his goodness. Uh, Acts 1 verse 8. If you can read for us the book of Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. I'm praying for a church which is filled by the power of the Holy Spirit. Which can witness about the goodness of God. You know, we have been filled by so many things. All the crap in the world that has come and filled our hearts. But today we are praying that God fills us with his Holy Spirit. That we come out of this church and we have a helper. We need a helper. What does it say? It says, <clears throat> but, you will receive the pow but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Amen. You see, uh, the children of God, there is no way you can witness about Jesus Christ if you haven't got the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's why sometimes you're even scared of going to the streets or telling, about, telling people about the goodness of Jesus Christ. It's, it becomes difficult. It becomes difficult for you to witness even to the people that you work with at work, your workplace, the people you go with to school, to witness about the power or the goodness of Jesus Christ. Unless you have got the Holy Spirit. The church stops witnessing about the power, the presence, the goodness, and all the good things about Jesus Christ when there is no Holy Spirit. That's why you are comfortable telling people about us, about our achievements, about how great our church is, about how good our, our marriages are, which is really good. But when the Holy Spirit comes about you, you witness about the goodness of God in you. You say... God has been so good for me in my marriage. God has been so good to me in my studies. God has been so good to me even at work. But when he is not there, it's all about you. It's all about your achievement. It's all about your degree. It's all about your this and that. But when the Holy Spirit comes, he gives you the boldness to witness about him. That's what happened to Paul, to Peter. Peter at what time? one time denied Jesus Christ. He said, I do not know him. That woman came, you know, the young girl who came and pointed and said, Surely you were with him. You look like, you talk like him and say, you know, woman, I don't know him. Peter cast, but when the Holy Spirit came upon him in the book of Acts, he stood up bold and witnessed about the goodness of Jesus Christ. There is no way you are going to witness about Jesus without the help of the Holy Spirit. That's why you need him and say, Lord, fill me with your power. That I may be able to witness about Jesus Christ. The Bible talks about the other help that He does. He helps us in our weaknesses. When we are weak, in all our weakness, in our imperfection, it's the Holy Spirit who comes and helps us. The Bible talks about that in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 26 and 27. If you can read for us, Daniela. Daniela today is my reader. She's helping me here read. She's the best reader I've ever seen. Book of Romans, chapter 8, 26. Thanks, Daniela. It says, And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed yes. in words. You see, for example, He helps us to pray because some of us, most of us, don't know how to pray. Yeah? You go to him and then you rumble and you say, but the Holy Spirit helps us to pray. He helps us to perfect our marriages. You know, I have understood that no amount of counseling can help you perfect your marriage. But the Holy Spirit can come and teach you even how to be a good wife. Even how to be a good husband. Even how to be a good father. Even how to be a good child. child. The Holy Spirit helps us in our imperfections, in our weaknesses. Where you are weak, call upon the Holy Spirit to come. And fill you up that he may strengthen you. That he may help you in your weaknesses. Yeah. For example, if you don't know how to pray, let him guide you in prayer. Ask him, Lord, I don't know how to pray. Let your spirit teach me. He helps us where we are weak. Yeah. And sometimes we run to man. It's always good to have friends. But with, the more we run to man, we are neglecting the presence of the Holy Spirit. Remember he said, we will never leave you as orphans. If a child has lost their mother and they lost their father, they are devoid of that kind of nurturing. But God in his wisdom said, I won't leave you as orphans. Whatever you need, the Holy Spirit is there. So even in your weakness, he's there to guide you. 
That's why we need him. The church should not cry about weaknesses because we have been entrusted the help of the Holy Spirit. And we need him at such a time in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, He gives us specific instructions. Mm -hmm. So in everything that you lack, you've got a helper. Mm -hmm. You've got somebody to help you. He is our helper. He can help you know that you don't know. Yeah, you know, I've seen people who've been taught even how to read. They've never gone to class. They don't know. They have never seen anything about reading. But when the Holy Spirit comes, he teaches them even how to read and write. Peter was unschooled. But when they saw him speaking, they said, this man is uncouth. But the way he speaks with boldness, with grace, he seems as if he has been educated, highly educated. He can help. He can come and help in your imperfections. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that he strengthens us. You know, some of us are weak. Weak mentally, weak even physically, weak even emotionally. But the Holy Spirit comes and, and strengthens us. He comes and strengthens you. You know, um, the, but the Bible talks about uh, the Holy Spirit coming upon Samson. Um, he says he came to him um, with might. And then Samson, just a human being like you and I, was able to come upon that lion and he tore it to pieces. That's the power he gives us, that he gives us strength to come against demons and, and, and all those um, powers of darkness. He strengthens you in your inner parts, the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's why you see for us as Christians, there is no weakness because when you are weak, he comes and strengthens you. He says that in the book of Ephesians, again by my, 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 my Daniel, um, chapter 3, verse 16. You know, I've got somebody here to help me, to strengthen you. You know, in this journey of life, many things come and they knock us down to weaken us. But the Bible says that the Holy Spirit comes to strengthen us. It says, I pray that from his glorious, ultimate, unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Through his spirit. He will empower you in your inner. Um, some, uh, some translations say that he may strengthen in your innermost parts. You know, you know, sometimes uh, we may walk as, as human beings, putting on our nice suits and ties and dresses, and we walk as if we've got all the strength in this world. But the Bible says that it comes to strengthen us in our innermost parts because there are things in life which come and knock us down and hurt us in our innermost parts. That we are walking, but we are wounded. Walking wounded. We are walking, but you're weak. You've been, you've been hurt. But God, the Bible says that um, Paul, actually Paul was praying for the church in Ephesus and says that, that, you know what, I pray that he may empower you, he may strengthen you in your innermost parts with his Holy Spirit. That's why he has left him to us, that he may come and strengthen us when we have lost hope, yeah? When you've been battered by the plights of life, they can come and, and they make you weak. You know, things come and knock us, yeah, and become weak. I've, I've met people who've been raped, you know, raped in life. That can hurt you. But the Holy Spirit can come and strengthen you. And I know no amount of words can come to encourage you, yeah, but the Holy Spirit can come and strengthen you in your innermost parts. Yeah, through sicknesses and grieving, the Holy Spirit can come and strengthen you can come and strengthen your innermost parts. He even can strengthen you to do things, tasks, that cannot be accomplished by human strength. We need him in our everyday life. You know, he comes and brings healing in your innermost parts. Yeah, Some of us have gone through life. Life has hit us left, right, and center. Things have been done to us. But it's only the Holy Spirit who can come and carry out what we call an investigation in your innermost parts to see where you have been weakened and hurt and then strengthen you and give you comfort. It's only the Holy Spirit. It's my prayer today that you may fill with that spirit. Yeah, I was talking to my sister some time back when she was young, you know, and this is 
um, as parents, you should really take care when people come into our homes. She was young. When she was young. When she was young, I think about um, nine or seven years. And one of the people, because our house, we grew up in a house where everybody, uh, we had so many people in our house, really extended families. And she was raped when she was young and molested uh, by an individual family member in the household. But she grew up with wounds in her spirit. And none of us knew what was going on. Yeah? And no amount of words you can tell her that can bring healing to her, except the power of the Holy Spirit that can come and touch the innermost parts in her to bring healing and strengthen her. Because when things like that are done unto you, they weaken your spirit. They bring you bitterness and hatred. But it's only the Holy Spirit who can come and strengthen you in your innermost parts where no man or doctor can touch. Because there's no scan in this world that can come and see your innermost parts where you're hurting. But the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus in his wisdom said, I'll never leave you as orphans. Because sometimes you may have a father or mother in the house, but you're living as an orphan. The Holy Spirit can come and fill that void that to my sister who was hurting emotionally, spiritually, him alone, the Holy Spirit can come and fill that void and touch your innermost parts and strengthen you where you have been hurt, where you've been pierced, where you've been injured and strengthen you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you offer prayers, but they don't penetrate as deep as that. But when the Holy Spirit comes, he touches the innermost parts. And that's why we need him in our churches. Because with our naked eyes, we cannot see the people hurting in their innermost parts. But when the Holy Spirit comes, he touches people where they are hurting. That's why people is saying that, you know what, I pray that God may strengthen you in your own innermost parts with his Holy Spirit. It's my prayer this afternoon that he may come and strengthen you your heart in because he has, has, he has an understanding of a father to the fatherless. He is the one that we need even today in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. He may come to strengthen us. You know, even when you are grieving, you are confused. It's, you need the Holy Spirit. There is a scripture that I want us to read again in first book of Samuel chapter 30 verse 4 to 6. I pray that you're being strengthened at such a time because we need the Holy Spirit in this time to come and strengthen us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That if you're grieving, Psalms, first book of Samuel, chapter 30, mm -hmm. 4 to 6, that those who've been molested, those who've been abused, going through emotional trauma, you need the Holy Spirit to come and strengthen mm -hmm. you. It's all you need. It's Him that we need in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Okay. First book of Samuel, chapter 30, verse 46, read. They wept until they could weep no more. David's two wives, Ahinoam, from the real... Yeah, leave the names alone. Don't worry about the names. Yeah. <laughs> and Abigail, the widow from the bar, from Carmel, were among those captured. David was now in great danger because all his men were very bitter about losing their sons and daughters. And they began to talk of stoning him. But David found strength in the Lord of his God. In yes. the Lord his God. Yes. David found strength in the Lord his God. Some other translations say that David strengthened himself in the Lord. Because he had come to a point where they had gone to fight. They came back to that place, Aklad. And then they found that his wife, his children had been captured by, by some other people. And all the men were with him cried tears and the bible says that they uh, they cried until they had no strength left in them and even the strength the, the little strength they had they gathered themselves to stone david because he was their leader and the bible says that david strengthened himself in the lord yeah it's only that in the lord we find strength and in this new testament church god has helped us with the holy spirit to come and strengthen us in our innermost parts that after crying and grieving and living, losing all our strength, he may come and strengthen us. That in this COVID-19 lockdown, I pray that after all that you've gone through, God may come and strengthen you in your innermost parts through the power of the Holy Spirit. 
Some of us have lost loved ones. Some of us are even confused. I don't know which country that we are in, that you might be in Uganda. Some of us haven't got anything to eat. Some people have lost their work. Some people are so confused, make, breaking down emotionally and mentally. But I pray that today, in your innermost parts, God may come and fill you with his spirit and strengthen you at such a time in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then the Bible says the Holy Spirit is going to be our comforter. He mm. is our comforter. He comforts us. Yeah. I love what Paul says in the second book of Corinthians, um, chapter, second book of Corinthians, chapter one, verse three to four. This is what he says. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Yeah. For just as we share abundantly the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. If we are distressed, it is your comfort and salvation. If you are comforted, it is your, for your comfort which produces in your patience endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. We need him as our comforter. The Bible talks about, this. Jesus says that I'm going to leave you a comforter. You know when you're going through the troubles of life, that you're comforted in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. He gives us that comfort. That even when you're going through, I normally say that if you're traveling through in, on the roads, which have got potholes throughout life, you need a car which has got strong, strong shock absorbers, that's a good suspension system that when you fall through the potholes, um, the car, um, the, 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 the shock absorbers will just shock, through, shock all the, 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 the taking the shock of the falling into the potholes, that you don't feel that discomfort, but the car just moves on. And once we have the Holy Spirit, he talk, takes us through the troubles of this life with so, so much comfort that you don't feel um, the discomfort of life. And we need him that he takes through the COVID-19 as if nothing has happened to you. He takes through the grieving period as if nothing has happened because he takes the shock. He takes in the shock and you go through life. Not that it does not harm you, but you don't grieve as the world grieves. You're not shocked as the world is shocked, but he comforts you. That's why you see, when we have him, he even forewarns us of the things that are going to happen even before time. That some people were in tune with the Holy Spirit. Even now, he's revealing things of what is going to happen in this lockdown, of what is going to happen in the time to come, so that you're not shocked as children of God. Because it gives us comfort. That's why he gives us dreams. Gives us visions. He tells us things. Daniel was told things to come like way before time. Way before time. He was told about the coming of Jesus Christ about 700 years before it happened. He was told about the end times even way before it happened. And once the Holy Spirit comes, he gives us that comfort. He forewarns us of the things to come so that you're not shocked. A lot of people who give testimonies that, you know what, I lost my loved one. But even in a dream, God showed me that this person is going. A lot of people saying that, you know what, this was bound to happen in my marriage, but God showed me something so that I'm not shocked. You're given comfort. And it's my prayer that we seek the Holy Spirit and it's going to give us the comfort that we need. Our comfort does not come in the amount of money we own in our accounts. Our comfort does not come from our husbands or our wife, our wives. Our comfort comes from the Holy Spirit. He is the one who is entrusted unto us. Our comfort does not come because the weather is good or bad outside. Our comfort comes from the Holy Spirit. He comforts us. Yeah, I remember one time when 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 uh, the Bible shows. Um, uh, Stephen, Stephen, uh, Stephen uh, in, the, in the book of Acts, I think it's chapter 7, he was being stoned to death. The Bible mm -hmm. says that then he was filled by the Holy Spirit, even at the time of death, and he was smiling. And the Bible says that um, the heavens opened, and then <coughs> he, see, he saw Jesus Christ standing in heaven. 
and he was able to forgive the people who were tormenting him, stoning him. Such comfort, to die in such comfort. And we need the Holy Spirit of comfort. You know, when he gives you comfort, you're not troubled by what was going on outside the world. You're not troubled by what the news says about um, who is dying and who is leaving. You're not troubled by whatever, because he forewarns you and he gives you comfort. When the whole world is panicking and jumping up and down, you have comfort because the world, the creator of heavens and earth has revealed things to you. That you know things that the world does not know. And you are comforted. You are comfortable because he knows that he's got the whole world in his hands. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We don't panic because everybody is sending a message on social media that this is what is happening. You are comforted because he gives us comfort. I love what um, Apostle, Peter say, Apostle, Apostle Paul here says. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us all in our troubles so that we can comfort those in trouble. So, in all our troubles, he gives us comfort. You know that the world is saying out there, we are comforted by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. He is our comforter. Mm -hmm. We are comfortable regardless of what is happening out there because we know our God is seated on the throne and is still judging. Our, our, the world is not in the hands of Bill Gates. The world is not in the hands of the people producing vaccines and all that. We are comforted for sure knowing that our God, our creator, is seated on the throne and reigning. We are comfortable, and I'm comfortable that no one can dethrone him from the throne so that I'm comfortable because the one I believe in is the creator of heavens and earth. So I'm comforted even when people are jumping up and down and saying this is going to happen, that's going to happen. I've got comfort because I believe in the one who is the sovereign of the entire world and is given in his Holy Spirit. If anything was to happen, he's going to come and reveal it to me because he comforts me and the Holy Spirit who is in me also knows the mind of God. So he's going to reveal me to me things that the world does not know. So for that I'm comforted. Mm -hmm. I'm comforted even world, when the world is troubled, is being troubled. In my troubles, he comforts me. I thank God for the Holy Spirit who gives us comfort in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And then the Bible says that he's going to guide us. He's going to guide us in all truth. My question to you out there, who guides you? Are you guided by the news on BBC? By the news on Al Jazeera? By the figures given on TV of who is going to die and who is going to live? I'm guided by the truth of the word of God. Because the Bible, Jesus promised me and he never lies that when the Holy Spirit comes, he's going to guide you in our truth. Yeah? Not our own truth, but the truth that comes from the word of God. Mm -hmm. So children of God, before you pass that message from social media, is it the truth coming from God? Are you guided by the Holy Spirit or are you guided by fear or excitement? I'm guided by the Holy Spirit. He glorifies, and the most important thing to me, that he's going to glorify Jesus Christ. The Bible talks about him, that he says he's going to come and he's going to glorify, he's going to give you whatever I need because he's glorifying my name. He's not in the business of glorifying individuals. You know, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that when we come out of this COVID-19, we shall be relying on things that glorify Jesus Christ, not on things that glorify individuals. Because the church or individuals, people have been in the business of glorifying themselves. This is what I've done. This is what I've done. These are my achievements. This is what I've built. This is what I've done. No. We are going to be saying, this is what Jesus has done. This is what Jesus is capable of doing. Jesus, Jesus has healed. Jesus Christ has, has, has redeemed. Jesus Christ has delivered. We are going back to that because you have the power of the Holy Spirit. Whatever the Holy Spirit does, it is to glorify the name of Jesus Christ. That's what he does. Known to idol worship. Idol worship has crept into the church where we idol worship even pastors and apostles and bishops and prophets. But whatever we do under the power of the Holy Spirit is to glorify the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The name of Jesus Christ should be glorified. Amen. He says that he's going to take from mine. He's going to be glorifying my holy name. I think that's in the book of John chapter 14 somewhere. And he says I'm going to glorify. He's going to do. When the Holy Spirit comes, the name of Jesus Christ is glorified. 
when the church is seated and the power of the Holy Spirit comes and everybody is filled by the Holy Spirit, we glorify Jesus, not the pastors, not the apostles, not the bishops. It's good to give them honor, but we glorify Jesus Christ. No one should take his position. And I think in the church, in the homes today, we've been slowly taking out the name of Jesus Christ and putting there the name of people. We have pictures of our pastors so big in our houses, in our homes, in our churches, forgetting that everything the Holy Spirit does is to glorify the name of Jesus Christ, lift him high and above. He should be remembered, he should be glorified, he should be honored. Everything the Holy Spirit does, the people that he heals, the people that he lifts up, the people that he gives jobs, is to glorify the name of Jesus Christ. Not our ability, not our academic qualifications, but to glorify the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And then to give us maturity and us to mature, we Amen. produce fruit. That's Amen. what the Holy Spirit does. Amen. And it's my prayer that as a church, we go back to the Holy Spirit. Amen. That we be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Amen. That we be guided by the Holy Spirit. Amen. That we be comforted by the Holy Spirit. Amen. That we be strengthened by the Holy Spirit Amen. in our innermost parts. Amen. That we be taught by the Holy Spirit because he is the one who takes away our orphanage and he becomes a father to the fatherless. Yeah, a mother to the motherless. He does not leave us on our own. And the church in this New Testament has been entrusted to the Holy Spirit. Let us invite him in our lives. Let us pray for him that will be filled by his power continually as we saw. Let us receive him, embrace him. And walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. And we shall be empowered in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I hope you've been blessed this afternoon. Amen. It's my prayer that wherever you are, pray even tonight that God may fill you with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just for two minutes, pray that God may fill you with the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, I pray for whoever has been listening to this message, O oh God Almighty. Even for people who are going to be listening in your respect, my Lord. Fill them with your power. Fill them with the power of the Holy Spirit. Those, my Father, God, who are troubled, that may be comforted. Those who have been molested and raped, my Father God, emotional abused, King of glory. I pray that you may come and strengthen them in their innermost parts and bring healing, my Father God, to their soul souls to their spirits, O King of glory. It's my prayer today in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that you fill us as a church with your power, with your Holy Spirit, and that your name will be glorified. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Um, and it's my prayer that even um, next time you join us, we shall be here once again on Saturday with the Uganda version as Eden Christian Fellowship. We shall be holding another service um, in Uganda. And then on Sunday, we shall be um, um, welcoming you back at 1 o'clock. May God bless you so much. And if you are there and you've never taken Jesus Christ to be your personal Lord and Savior, I'll take this opportunity to invite you into the kingdom of God. Um, if you are there and you've never taken this, cannot work. The Holy Spirit cannot come and fill you if you have not taken Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. Remember, he died for all of us. He shed his blood for your sins and mine. And if you're there, I'm going to lead in this prayer. Um, let us say these words with them. Say these words with me. Say, Dear Lord, Dear Lord I, thank I thank you for sending Jesus Christ, for sending Jesus Christ to, die for my sins. to die for my sins. Today I come and I repent of all my sins. I confess, I confess all the evil I've done. And I pray that you may have mercy upon me. I thank you for the cross. I confess that Jesus Christ, you are my Lord and Savior. And right now, Right Remove my names Remove my from the book of death, book of death. And, put and put them in the book of life, book of life. and remember me, and remember me for, eternity. for eternity in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray. Jesus Christ I pray. If you've repeated that prayer, you've become born again. It's my prayer that once the church is open up, you find a church which is filled by the power of the Holy Spirit. But meanwhile, you can come and join us whenever we pray here as Eden Christian Fellowship and be filled and continue to digest the word of God. And let me pray for you. Father, I pray uh, for their individuals who confess this, uh, this prayer. Uh, guide them. Surround them with your grace as a shield. Protect them in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, we pray.
Amen. Amen. Um, have a wonderful Sunday evening. Um, may God guide you. May God protect you. May God cover you with his grace every single day. And join us again as Eden. We pray for you as Eden Christian Fellowship. We shall be here again on Saturday at 5.30 in Uganda Virgin and on Sunday at 1 p.m. Um, God bless you so much. Amen. 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 Amen.